Just need Vinny Benedetto with the Denver Gazette. Mike, what, what was the emphasis in practice today? Yeah, I think um, in the playoffs, obviously, it's about adjustments game to game. So um, we had some defensive adjustments. You know, they got loose a few times. And then offensively, um, just figuring out ways to beat them. They played a pretty good defensive game on us. So um, figuring out ways we could beat them. Kind of an uncharacteristic shooting night for from you from three, um, what do you chalk that up to? Or did you like the, the looks you got and just missed them? Or yeah, I thought it? I had great looks. Um, ball felt pretty good coming out of my hands, but um, yeah, I, I can't worry too much about percentage. They were good looks, so I got to keep shooting those, uh, work on my work on my shots on these couple days off, hopefully um, some more fall next game. And I heard you say on uh, JJ Reddick's podcast, throughout all the back surgeries, there was never a plan B. You didn't start thinking about what else you could possibly do? What allowed? Do you think that approach kind of allowed you to to be successful in your rehabs from from the numerous setbacks? Yeah, definitely. I just think like a unrelenting will. You know, no matter what happens to you, until your body can't go anymore. You know, uh, that was just kind of my my thought process. Was like I'm gonna keep working at this. this. Is what I love to do. You know, my whole life growing up, I never had a plan B. Um, Always thought I was going to make it to the NBA. Always wanted to be an NBA player. So uh, through all the surgeries, all the up and downs, that never changed. And I just, uh, I think it takes a lot of faith, but it also just takes a lot of willpower and uh, things like that. Michael, we're going to go Jeff Zilgit. Jeff Zilgit, USA Today. Michael, there's been a lot of talk about this Nuggets team that had there not been injuries to you and Jamal over the past few seasons, maybe you would have been here sooner. Did you start to see that develop? You know, or when did you start to see that, hey, getting to this stage was really possible? Yeah, I think um, there's really a ton of teams throughout the regular season who are good enough to make a finals run. Um, tons of things can happen in the playoffs, whether it's injuries, um, things like that, that kind of give a team an edge. So I think uh, we, we knew we had this potential in us ever since this core came together, you know, since we traded for Aaron. And we, we went on a good little win streak. We really, we really felt like we had this potential back in the bubble. Um, we felt like that Lakers series um, could have gone a completely different way. Um, Anthony Davis hit a big game winner, one of those games to put them up in the series. And they were a really good team, so they got us there. But we knew we had the, the team because we were still very young. You know, We knew if we keep this core together a couple years down the road, we could be right back here. Uh, and that's what we did. And you know, shout out to the, to the guys that believed in, believed in this core, kept us together. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're back here and we're excited. Going back to Jeff. When you got here um, and started playing alongside Nicola, was there anything that you, you – had you ever seen a passer like that? And probably not because it's so unique. But, you know, how did you prepare for playing alongside him knowing, you know, that a pass could come at any time? Yeah, so in high school I actually played uh, – with a few, with a few really, really good passers. You know, they're different than Nicola because it didn't come from the center position. But I played at AU with Trey Young, who was also a tremendous passer. Um, we we fed off of each other. You know, he would find me for amazing looks as well. So I'm I'm used to playing alongside really, really um, good, good players. Nicola's a little different, like I said, because a lot of it's coming out of the post and things like that. But um, it's very easy to play with those guys like that. So um, I'm very blessed to to have. Good teammates like Nicola, you know, Aaron's also a very good passer. I feel like Jamal's gotten a lot better um, in that area. So um, we got a lot of dudes who make a lot of good plays. We're going to stay on the left side, fourth row. Uh, Bennett Durando, Denver Post. Mike, um, coach said after game one he thought there was a stretch in the fourth where you guys just got a little stagnant against their zone. When you look back at that, do you sort of identify any sort of bad habits that you guys need to fix against that, or is it more so that you were getting some of the shots that you like and they just weren't going in? Yeah, we had a few good looks. I missed one in the corner. Nicola missed a little um, post turnaround shot. Uh, I think Jamal missed a shot. But there would definitely was a period in that game where we were just launching deep threes, um, contested shots. I don't think we've really seen a zone the way they do it. So it's hard to make adjustments in the middle of a game when you don't really know what's going on. But uh, that's what the playoffs is about. We, we watch film, saw what they're doing with their zone. Hopefully, uh, attack it a little bit better and make a, make a few more of those shots. We're going to go to the middle fourth row. Hi. Uh, last game, uh, the Heat was focused more in Jokic and in Murray, and you and Gordon were the difference for the game. Did you prepare that beforehand, or that was something that occurred during the game? 
Yeah, I think um, one thing about our team is we just take what the defense gives us. So game to game, possession to possession. Um, we got a lot of guys who are very un unselfish and will just take what the defense gives them. So when a team is playing Nicola one on one, he can go to work. You know what I mean? They were playing Jamal in, in, in ways where he could get to his shot. But as soon as a team brings a double team to Nicola, he's going to find the right guy, make the right passes. So it wasn't really pre planned. We got a team that just takes what the defense gives us. We're going to go to the left side front row again. Mike, when we've when we've talked to you about defense, you've talked a lot of it, a lot of it up to, to feeling better physically. Are you still at the point where you're feeling better and better and better as, as the season goes on? It's a, it's a point in the year where a lot of guys are probably not feeling as good as they did in the beginning of the season. Are you like in reverse of that basketball? Uh, I think, um, yeah, I think I'm still still healing, still getting back to my full athleticism and things like that as time goes on. But at this point in the season, there's a lot of soreness. So when it comes to like regular soreness, um, we all are experiencing that. These these games are so intense, playing higher minutes. But overall, like, my, my healing from my surgeries and things like that, I still think I'm on the up and up. You know what I mean? Uh, I think this offseason will make another leap in that area, get to focus on some things you don't get to focus on during the season. But, uh, yeah, definitely sore at this point in the year for sure. Left side, fourth row. This is sort of random, but you guys in Miami both having made the deep, bubble run a couple of years ago had to have been around each other in close quarters a lot. I'm curious if there were ever any funny interactions or, or just sort of what, what that was like being in that enclosed space with them or for any you memory know, stand <clears throat> Yeah, the bubble was pretty unique. I forget, So there was three hotels that uh, teams were divided in. I can't remember if the Heat were in our hotel, but uh, walking around and going to different restaurants in the bubble, you see everybody. You see uh, – all, all the teams, all the different players. I don't really remember specific instances running in into the heat, but uh, it might have been because they were in a different hotel. But the bubble was definitely a unique experience. We'll take one more question for Michael. Jeff Zilgin on standing up. Yeah, I'll just follow up on the bubble. What's your lasting memory of the bubble? Was there anything? Uh, I, I know it was a, a long stretch for teams that were in there. Do you take away like any enjoyment from that experience? Yeah, I look back on it and take a lot of enjoyment. Um, that was kind of the first time playing with the Nuggets where I got consistent minutes. So it was kind of um, it was it was a good time for me because that still was considered my rookie season, um, and I wasn't getting a ton of time before the bubble. But then you know we took that big break. I came to the bubble when some guys had COVID, so they couldn't come out there, and I really got to uh, to play my game, you know, um, and shine with the Nuggets. So that kind of started my role on the team but my my favorite memory of the bubble is definitely the pina coladas at the pool like we would go to the pool every single day me bobo Bo, um tori tori cray we would just go to the pool and drink pina coladas like all day <laughs> on that note thanks mike appreciate it